Okay, here we are again. Uh, we're at the shop, and uh, today we're going to do a little aluminum uh, work here. This is a uh, let me see, can I zoom in? This is an aeronautic, uh, uh, an aircraft uh, tow bar. I guess you can kind of see here. Kind of runs down here. Um, this is how they tow the airplanes. Actually, naturally, the the tug would uh, the tug would attach here. And then the bar, it's, it's aluminum, uh, it's got wheels uh, actually on both ends so that you can, uh, I guess so that you can easily move it around. And then I guess on this end, uh, different, uh, different heads, I think, slide in and out of the socket here to, uh, you know, to facilitate the different, you know, the use of the, you know, different attachments for a different aircraft. So, um... And the only problem with this one is that um, that it, it, it snapped, there's a handle, this handle here, uh, let's see, that would go like that, and um, it's, I guess to help facilitate lifting it, carrying it, whatever, uh, you know, this would go like this, and you'd put your hand here, I guess, to help lift it, and this uh, little aluminum part here obviously uh, snapped off. Uh, it looks like if you look here, it looks like something something skidded along here and impacted this because I I repair these. In fact, I'm I'm pretty sure I've repaired this. Uh, you know, these are a little bit fragile. It is aluminum and it's a rough environment. You've got you know thousand pound you know multi thousand pound tugs you know that that you know go through there and it's a rough environment. I'm sure. Um, you know these guys are hustling to get these planes moved around but it looks like something impacted this this way maybe a you know forklift blade or something like that and probably you know snapped it off that way so uh, like I say since I have uh, repaired it already um, this is like I said an aluminum sleeve <clears throat> and the um, you know it's just a bolt that goes through and holds it and it's just you know like I said it's an aluminum sleeve and then this thing comes through this handle uh, comes through to to hold it I've what I've done is because it seemed you know a little bit you know like I said like I said I've repaired it so what I did was I I machined a, a new one uh, and what I did was I just made it um, a heavier wall um, so <clears throat> the inside is correct uh, it's machined to size and the cross hole for the bolt is the same um, what I'm gonna do though is I'm just gonna I'm gonna go back over to the milling machine and I'm just going to put, I'm not going to fish mouth it exactly, I mean, because it, it's almost, it's almost okay, as you can see. Um, and it'll be, you know, fairly easy to get that welded. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a slight, a slight um, bevel in it so that it'll, you know, it'll sit there without too much wiggling. That's all when I want to put it on there. And I'll probably just set a clamp, you know, to hold it on. So, uh, I'll uh, show you. I'm going to bring it back over to the milling machine. I drilled the cross hole already. I guess I should have thought to do it then. Uh, and all the lathe work is done. Alright, so I've, um, I've set it up in the milling machine here. And uh, I'm just going to, this is one of the larger, you know, end mills I have. Uh, and I'm just going to, again, just to, it, I know it's not going to be a proper fish mouth or whatever, but it doesn't need to be. It's just, just a slight little what would you say like a reverse hump in here just so that it'll sit on there and uh, and you know and it'll keep it keep me from having to, to fight with it too much that's all and uh, then I can you know I can get a clamp on it this way and it should be fine uh, it's such a large diameter tube that it, it won't need an actual an actual fish mouth there'll be plenty of room here and then again this is a very heavy wall I've you know purposely made it very heavy wall so that it you know I can easily uh, get a nice nice weld in there so let's uh, let's see here let's start this up and I'm just gonna gently like I said I'm just gonna gently walk this thing in here and uh, just take a little a little cut on this
think that's going to be plenty, actually. Let's see. Can we, what I'll do is I'll crank this out. And then we'll, let's see, can I come up here? Can we zoom in? Yeah, see, it's just a small, small uh, bevel in there. And that should be fine, just, just so it has a little something to, uh, you know, to have a little point to register. And I think that'll be fine. Well, we'll see in a minute. All right, back over here now. I just set it on the tube, and uh, I think that's going to absolutely have the desired effect. You can see we have, uh, you know, again, just a point so that it, you know, it has a registration point. You know, again, there'll be no problem to, you know, to weld around this. So uh, I'm going to call that good, and uh, so now I can go about knocking all this out of here and uh, and then once we've done that got it all cleaned up I'll set this in place and go about welding it up so let me get that all cleaned up um, yeah <laughs> about cleaning this up I'm not gonna I'm gonna try to maybe uh, film a little uh, you know video a little of this cleaning this up because there's a lot of grinding to do um, grinding aluminum is not like grinding steel. When you grind aluminum, uh, it is like, it's like you're slinging cotton candy around, I guess is the best way to describe it. Um, it just, I mean, it's going to look like it's snowed in here when I'm all done. So I'm going to, uh, in fact, maybe I'll actually back this thing. I've got it on the, on the forklift. I may actually back this thing outside. Uh, I'll try to... I'll try to get some sort of an angle on it so that you can, you know, see a little bit of it, but I'm probably not going to film the whole thing because I just don't want all that stuff going around the, you know, into the camera and, you know, chance screwing it up. So, uh, yeah, that's what I think I'm going to do. That. I'm going to back it out a little bit and then I'll, uh, I'll try to give you a little bit of a shot of that, but I, I won't film it all. I've got that all uh, all ground flush now. Um, <clears throat> all the old, you know, the old weld and all the pieces of the old uh, the old part there. Uh, you can see what I mean about all the uh, you know the way it throws the the shards of aluminum around when you grind. Um, and by the way, not that I don't like nice tools. I do. I, I appreciate a nice tool uh, on the truck and even in the shop. I mean, I use you know. Good quality. I try to, uh, you know, mostly German, you know, uh, Metabos and, uh, and and Bosch's and stuff like that. However, um, I keep around some of these horror freight, as I like to call them, these cheap, whatever they are, eleven dollar or twelve dollar grinders. Sometimes the wheel is probably worth what the damn grinder is worth. But I keep them around for just things like this: a little flap wheel, um, you know, to clean things up. Maybe one with a wire brush occasionally, or you know, a, a steel wire brush, a stainless wire brush. Uh, I keep one of these around with this, you know, specifically with a disc on it for aluminum because it's not very hard on it. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I had to do a fair amount of grinding. This thing really, it's not even really all that warm. Um, but I do that just because, you know, again, what am I going to have a, a $300, you know, Metabo grinder just to run a, 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 you know, an aluminum wheel? No, it makes sense to do that. Uh, and like I said, when the thing shits the bed, I take the wheel off it and toss it in the garbage and, you know, wait for the next sale and get another one for $11.99. So, uh, again, that's my uh, position on that sort of thing. So anyway, this is all pretty much cleaned up now. So now I'll, uh, I'll bring it, I'll wheel it back, I'll blow everything off out here. 
and I'll uh, wheel it back inside <coughs> and uh, and get set up for the um, you know for the welding on there. <coughs> so we're uh, we're gonna heliox some uh, heavy wall aluminum. All right, I'm uh, pretty well set up here now to uh, to do the welding. I've got it clamped in position again. Like I said, that's why I milled that little thing again, it's just to just to register it on there. It's not really a fish mouth. Not that you'd need it, because again, it's such a it's such a, a large diameter pipe uh, tube that it's it's just not necessary. So this is going to be fine. And again, with the heavy wall here, and this is obviously pretty heavy wall. Plenty of plenty of surface contact to weld. Now I am going to have to uh, to preheat this, of course, because this again is quite heavy and thick, and this is quite heavy. So I am going to heat this up. Now I don't know how much. I'll try to set this thing up and you can maybe watch me weld it a little bit, but I'm welding here, okay, and there, I mean right there, is the, uh, you know, the, the, the cooler for the, uh, for the Heliarch, which I don't know if you watch any of my other videos, it is incredibly loud. It's like we're at the airport listening to this thing. So, you know, not that I'm going to really be talking, but, you know, you, again, I'll, I'll set the thing up as best I can. But it's literally, you know, two, two, three feet away from where I'm welding. So uh, again, not that we really need the audio on that, but uh, and again, I'm going to be walking around this thing, you know, with my, you know, with my my body. So I don't know if I'm going to be in the shot or whatever. But I'll try to uh, I'll try to set it up so that you can watch some of it anyway. All right. <clears throat> um, before I get too involved here, because there's going to be, you know heating and this and that. Uh, I set my torch up. Uh, there's my torch uh, that I'm going to be using. Uh, this is a water cooled, um, obviously, <laughs> by the <laughs> that cooler you always hear in the background. Uh, it's a water cooled, you know, 250 amp torch. Uh, I guess they call them 20 models or something. Um, again, I am, uh, I'm sure you know from watching my stuff, I am a uh, traditionalist. Some say old school, whatever you want to call it. Um, that is a, uh, a pure tungsten uh, green band. Um, I like it for aluminum because I do like that, you know, the way it forms that ball end. Yeah, I know all about making the ball end on the thoriated and all of that, know all about it. I just, I like pure tungsten for welding aluminum. Um, I do, however, I really like the gas lenses and I think they have their place and uh, I think this would, you know, this is a good application for a gas lens. Um, so, and I, I do prefer, if I can get away with it, I prefer the smaller torch. So, uh, you know, it's water cooled. Yeah, this is going to be about its limit because I'm going to be standing on this thing, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, but I think we'll be all right. Now, for something like this, when I'm doing something like this, a very heavy section, especially in aluminum, uh, naturally I, I have my bottle of argon there. But uh, you might be able to see over here, uh, yeah, down in there. I also keep a bottle of uh, helium there all the time, uh, and I have a you know, naturally it's regulated. And I brought them together in a simple uh, a simple Y that I fabricated here. Um, uh, I have check valves; those are just regular oxygen check valves. Um, you know, bring them together. So it it by putting helium in there, you really do get an extra. An extra, it's, it's almost like you give your machine a whole nother range by doing that. It really does help. So uh, for this, I will be using both the, uh, the argon and the helium, you know, mixed together. So, uh, and the phone is ringing. Isn't that wonderful? Um, all right, so let me get back to you. All right, so after the phone rang and I'm back. Uh, and yeah, so that's anyway, that's that's my my opinion on all of that stuff um, So that's where we're at. That's what I'm gonna do. There's the torch. I'm using I'm gonna use the argon helium mix um, And I'm gonna get ready and I'm also going to like I say I'm gonna heat this whole area up here with the torch uh, Before I begin because you know again that will help as well. This is very heavy. This is very heavy. So uh, I'll try to set, like I said, I'll try to set the camera up so you can see a little of this as I go.
Well, you don't need the audio, but I'm sure it's gonna suck. We're gonna employ a couple of my uh, TIG fingers there that I got from Welding uh, Tips and Tricks, uh, Jody Collier there. These things really do work very well. And uh, that thing is hot. So uh, this might be a uh, really good use for these. contamination or whatever it was that was uh, right up in here so um, I'm just gonna finish now I'm gonna come finish coming around here and join that back together I'm sure I'll be standing in front of it you probably won't be able to see that once I get this first pass laid in uh, then I'm gonna naturally I'm gonna do two uh, well at least two maybe three actually and then uh, so I'll I'll uh, I'll bring you back afterwards and let you see what we've done.
Okay, um, I've started on what I think is going to be the, uh, zoom in there a little bit, now you can't really see it. It's, um, I don't want to block the camera, so I've started in here. Uh, now hopefully I can just reach around from the other side and then walk it around from that side. <clears throat> um, so this should technically be the last pass. We'll kind of float this in and see what happens. Okay, well, I guess that's uh, <clears throat> that's going to wrap up all the welding on this. Let me see if I can zoom in here a little bit. There we go. Um, that's um, essentially that's three passes uh, around the the piece. Um, let's see. Um, so that should pretty much do it. Um, I'll put. Uh, you know, naturally one pass in, and then one up towards the top, and then one all, you know, all around on the bottom just to try to, to float it in. And um, that's about it, really. I think that should pretty much do it. Um, I think it's a whole lot better than it was. Um, and that's the way the handle goes in. You can see the way it, you know, it's just a handle to grip this way, I guess, to help lift the tow bar down at this end as they you know, drop it on the eye for the tug. So, I guess that's about it. <clears throat> um, that should finish this up. Um, what else? I think that's all. Uh, you can see pretty much as, as I did the welding there. Um, and of course, this is the machine that I used. Again, that, that cooler is... <laughs> maybe I'm going to make a project <clears throat> of uh, trying to make my own cooler that's uh, that's a little little more silent uh, or a little more quieter than that one I I really really hate that thing I mean not just for filming it for videoing but I just I mean it it's just it's terrible just to hear that thing rattle and, and I've tried everything I've got it set on a piece of rubber mud flap I've had it on carpet I've tried everything and um, <clears throat> this is the machine <clears throat> the welding machine that I was using uh, and again nothing fancy here this is I don't know I guess from the 60s or something, there's no square wave, no synchro wave, no balance, no frequency adjustment. That's it. It either has high frequency or it doesn't. There's nothing fancy. 
So again, <clears throat> I do the best I can with what I've got. But uh, I'm happy with the machine. It's a good machine. <clears throat> it's, uh, you know, it's served me pretty well so far. Um, so I guess that's about it. So that, um, like I said, that'll pretty much wrap up the, uh, you know, this aluminum tow bar thing here. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. So uh, we'll see you next time. And uh, I appreciate you watching. And uh, don't forget, as some famous guy once said, everybody polka. See you later.